Welcome to the Alternatives Open House. This meeting is an important part of the US-17 Trail Project Development and Environmental Study. The project is being conducted by the Florida Department of Transportation. The purpose of this Alternatives Open House is to provide you the opportunity to review project information, ask questions, and offer comments about the proposed trail from State Road 40 to the Volusia County Putnam County line. Maps, display boards, and other project information are on display here this evening. Project representatives are available throughout the meeting area to discuss the study and answer your questions about the proposed project. Comment forms are available at the sign-in table and at the comment table for your use. We encourage you to complete a form and drop it into one of the boxes. As stated by Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and practiced by the Florida Department of Transportation, public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either Jennifer Smith of Florida Department of Transportation, District 5, or Jacqueline Paramore, also of Florida Department of Transportation, in the Tallahassee office. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to FDOT procedure in a prompt and courteous manner. The purpose of the US 17 Trail PDE study is to close the existing trail gap in the St. Johns River to Sea Loop between State Road 40 to the Volusia County and Putnam County line just north of Seville. It is a shared use non-motorized trail project that promotes non-motorized travel, increased mobility, improved connectivity, enhanced economic prosperity and healthy living. The intended trail users include bicyclists, pedestrians, skaters, runners, and others. The trail is proposed to be 12 feet wide with the potential to be reduced to 8 feet in highly constrained areas. The Sun Trail Program stands for Shared Use Non-Motorized Trail Program and was established for Florida Department of Transportation to develop a statewide network of paved trails. This allows non-motorized vehicles and pedestrians to access a variety of origins and destinations with limited exposure to motorized vehicles. The Sun Trail Network is created as a component of the Florida Greenways and Trail System, which is planned by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. The St. John's River to Sea Loop is a partially completed 260-mile trail system that will link together five counties and several communities including St. Augustine, Daytona Beach, Titusville, DeLand, and Palatka along Florida's Atlantic Coast and the St. John's River Corridor. The project spans approximately 14 miles and is located along US 17 between State Road 40 and the Volusia County Putnam County line just north of Seville. The star indicates where we are this evening at the Pearson Community Center. The purpose is to provide a multi-use trail that meets Sun Trail Network criteria. The need is for pedestrian and bicycle accommodations for local and regional users. 
This need will be met by providing a multi-use trail that fills the approximate 14-mile gap in the St. Johns River to Sea Loop Trail between State Road 40 and the Volusia County, Putnam County line. There are a number of challenges associated with the proposed trail in this corridor. The challenges include the proximity of the rail line, proximity to high-speed motor vehicle traffic, potential conflicts at driveways and side street crossings, right-of-way availability, potential utilities impacts, wetlands impacts, and drainage and traversing cross drains. There are a number of valuable and important stakeholders involved with this project, including Volusia County, the Town of Pearson, River to Sea Transportation and Planning Organization, River of Lakes Heritage Corridor, and the St. John's River to Sea Loop Alliance. Listed here are the four notable components of a PD&E study. They are engineering analysis, environmental impact analysis, archaeological historic resources evaluations, and alternatives development and refinement. There are a number of typical sections being considered in this study corridor. In the rural highway segments, the section for alternative A is for a 12-foot wide pathway to be located as far from the highway as possible while maintaining the needed cross-sectional geometry according to the Florida Design Manual. The alternative B typical section maintains the same needed pathway cross-sectional geometry but would place the pathway at the minimum distance away from the highway edge. In the urban highway segments of the corridor, the typical section for alternative A on the northbound or east side of the roadway and for alternative D, which would be on the southbound or west side of the roadway, would consist of a 12-foot wide pathway. To implement this typical section, however, additional right-of-way would be required. The alternative typical section, shown as alternative B and C for the northbound and southbound sides respectively would fit within the existing right-of-way. For this typical section, the pathway width would be reduced to the Florida Design Manual minimum 8 feet and the existing bike lanes within the roadway itself would supplement accommodating some of the anticipated bicyclists. Depicted here is the segmentation for the alternatives. Eight analysis segments emerge from application of the typical section. Rural typical sections are considered in segments 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8. Urban typical sections are considered in segments 5 and 6 within the town of Pearson. The segments were created considering right-of-way and features such as streets, road cross sections, existing pathways, and other structures. The portion of the corridor with the newly constructed trail in Pearson and the design pathway section just north of State Road 40 are excluded. Within each of the segments, the alternatives were evaluated using general evaluative criteria within these six categories. Benefits to users, social impacts, potential natural or cultural environmental effects, potential physical effects, safety, and estimated project cost.
This slide highlights the schedule, funding, and next steps. In 2017, the PD&E study was initiated. Then in 2018, an environmental and engineering data collection was completed along with the kickoff meeting, alternatives development, and environmental and engineering analysis. This year, a specific purpose survey is being completed and we are currently at the alternatives open house step. The remainder of 2019 will be occupied with refining alternatives and finalizing the environmental and engineering documents. Closing out this project in 2020 will be a non-major state action approval. Some future phases include design, partially programmed for 2021, and right-of-way and construction, both of which are currently not funded. Your comments are welcome. You're encouraged to provide feedback on the comment forms available at the sign-in table and the comment table. Once completed, the form can be dropped into one of the boxes provided. Or if you prefer, you may mail or email your comments, written statements, or exhibits to David Graber, FDOT Project Manager, at the address on the comment form. Submissions must be postmarked by June the 10th 2019 to be included in the public record. Thank you for your participation tonight. The slideshow will repeat momentarily.